and I was just getting off work. And um, there was a guy walking by. I, I, how ironic is it? He was pushing a shopping cart. And um, he was pushing a shopping cart by. He never asked for anything, never said anything. So I went to the car, got all the change and everything I had, and I had a couple of dollars in my pocket. And I called him back. Hey, come here, come here. And I gave him, I gave him all the change and a couple of dollars and stuff I had. So I get back to the car, and Melissa's looking at me because you know we're not, we're not li living, you know, you know, I'm working at a roofing company. She's like, what are you doing? I said, oh, I told her, I said, that's God. God sending somebody through your life, and, and, and it changes how you look at people, how you treat people, you know what I mean? Because before you judge them, you think that you may be getting judged yourself. You know, because we were doing pretty good, you know? Probably making like seven fifty a week. It wasn't you know, real big money, but enough to maintain, you know? And um, we had, we had, you know, had a couple of vehicles money in the bank and you know it's just this fellow just grew apart I, this isn't the way i want to live you know coming from you know owning homes cars motorcycles you know eating at some, the most expensive restaurants in nashville to wondering where i'm gonna be if i make enough money to say well i don't have to dumpster dive today my name is Tia Airy. I am executive director of Family Promise of Greater Orlando. The purpose of Family Promise of Greater Orlando is essentially to help homeless families get back on their feet. Um, families come to us in crisis and they need help. My governor named Wesley Brickett, so I got to Maryland, I mean, I got to Orlando from Maryland um, in a relationship, you um, know, her. Her children were here, and we come to visit the children. And then you know, we broke up. Um, well, I was I'm, I was kicked out basically, uh, but uh, unfortunately, it's been a, the transition's been a little struggle, you know, trying trying to get it back together. So, my name is Azzy Doris Scott Smotherman, and I'm from Murfreesboro, Tennessee, the Nashville area. I was a, a lead man and architect for uh, Jones Brothers Construction. Worked in 37 states and 16 countries until I started having health problems. They've, they've kind of exhausted all their resources. They're usually um, tired and stressed out and afraid. You know, when you get to this point of actually being homeless, You've kind of burned all your bridges. It's a very fearful place to be. I, I would never in my life think at 46 years old I would be out here in this situation like this. My family does not know, they, they, you know, they don't know that I'm out here. I wouldn't want my family to know. I understand. I, I mean, I come from, you know, I didn't grow up in a bad, you know, neighborhood and, and uh, poor family and stuff like that, you know. Family pretty, they wasn't, you know, they just average, you know. I have really no family left, they're all past. Which, that makes it hard on, harder on me than anything. Oh man, a normal day here. I haven't had one yet. I think the hardest part about it, about being here, the situation, and not knowing anybody. You know, it's just basically just being self-reliant, being by yourself, you know. You know, any time you go home, you know, it's always, it's not always just the, the home, it's not the, the, the city that you miss, you know what I mean, so much as the, the familiarity of people, you know. To go somewhere and, and everybody knows your name, you know. That's, that's, that's just, that's what makes place home, you know. I don't hang around, even here, I don't hang around with anybody. Yeah, 
bro. After this right here, you know, before your dream used to be a lot different. And then after being out here in a situation like this, you see, you tend to downsize a whole lot more than on your dream. My dream is to have a normal, just 40 hour job, a house with a nice, just a small yard, you know, and a, a car, and, you know, see, that's it. Being in a house or a trailer or a tent, anything like that, you know, just to have a job and everything. I try to do it all, you know. So I try any, whatever I can to make an honest dollar. You gotta keep that, that integrity intact, you know what I mean? We, of course, as a society and as a caring community, don't want people to be in danger. Um, and so, you know, we, we make every effort we can to get people off of the streets because it can be dangerous. You, you, will, you will find after being in this business for a while that it will sometimes take a, a client, you know, two or three experiences of homelessness before they, they realize that, that they've got to work to get out of the crisis. You know, I, I'm a very good mood person. I mean, it's, it ain't like you can't do it. I'm structurally dysfunctional is the word to me. I don't consider, you know, I'm not going to sit there and whine and complain about being homeless. You know, as long as I stay dry when it rains and my blankets stay dry, that's all good. You know, this is not too bad other than some fire ants. I'm not envious of the man riding by in the Benz and the, and the Maserati and, the, you know, Porsches and all that. I'm envious of the guys. And you know, sitting out there in the yard, man, with the barbecue grill, you know what I mean? His family, you know, milling around and, you know, it's that, that's the guy I'm in, bitch. So that's, that's, the, that's where I want to be, you know, just peace of mind. Regardless of the situation, I'm always feeling just like everything's going to be okay, you know? So, um, basically, that's I always, I mean, the outcome's going to be, it's just, you know, patience and perseverance, you know, keep pushing through, one day at a time. You know, I just, this is how I go through life. Been struggling for a long time, so this is nothing but another day, you know.